Hello, I am Shachi Srivastava and over the course of two lectures I will be taking you through uh, the basics of Hilbert space theory. So I have titled this as an introduction to Hilbert spaces but I believe it should actually be a reintroduction to Hilbert spaces. So let's get started. I'll try and keep everything at a very basic level and not include too many complicated proofs. So let's get started. What is the basis, basic idea about a Hilbert space? What we want to do, think of R3. It's a wonderful space because it's finite dimensional and that helps. You have nice geometry here and you have the dot product. What is the dot product? If you recall, where A is this tuple and B is the corresponding tuple in R3. And you can do this for any two vectors in R3 and this allows us to actually define angle between two vectors and more importantly orthogonality. So we say A is, we can say when our two uh, vectors are orthogonal and using this idea of dot product we can also define the length of the vector. So the idea is to see how far we can pick up these and other properties of R3 and take it to higher dimensions in particular to infinite dimensional spaces. So, so as we go through all the, all the concepts, abstract ones for Hilbert spaces, it would be a good idea to keep R3 at the back of our minds. Right now, so we start with a basic uh, vector space x is of course in a billion group just practicing and this is over a field but we will take fields to be either c mostly c or sometimes the reals so given this vector space we can define an inner product so what is an inner product on a vector space So by an inner product on V, we mean this, a map from where the any two elements, okay, this is V, are mapped to this and some properties are satisfied. Okay, what are those properties? So it behaves nicely with addition in the first component, first variable. For all alpha in C, so this is the anti symmetric property, sort of, and this is for all x, y in V, and lastly. Maybe I should write for all x, y later. x, x is always positive and x, x is 0 if. Okay, so this is what an inner product is. And then, and we might recall all of us that V with such an inner product is called
and inner product space. So far so good, we are still in our basic linear algebra structure, structures. Now we can define something called a norm. So if I set norm x to be then this defines a norm on V. So this norm is the analog for this distance this length of a the vector a we were talking about which i defined with respect to this and you can see so the inner product is based is working analogously to the dot product in r3 up till now and then we define this norm so some of you many of you would know there is a notion of norm anyway so given so this is again recalling A norm okay all our vector spaces are non-empty x is a map this going from x to the positive reals which does the following things it sort of does the right thing about scalar multiplication and lastly you have the so-called triangle inequality okay let me add this for all x y belong to okay and this is for all x belonging to x and then x with this norm is called a normed space so it's a norm space all right and if i define if i set let me change colors a bit so if I set D then D is a matrix on X so here comes the, ana and the analysis part of it and you have a topology defined by matrix so you have notions of convergence with respect to this norm or the matrix and this whole machinery is there so now I have defined I started with a inner product so I said suppose V is an inner product space and I define this thing here which I want to call a norm so we need to check that this terminology is justified so a norm defined in this way should satisfy n1 n2 and n3 so if we have a look n1 is easy for this particular norm because i4 automatically gives you n1 n2 if you write on norm alpha x you can see you, you can work with squares because norm x is xx half so you can see norm alpha x is simply alpha x So we are fine with this okay so n2 is okay for n3 it is not so obvious just by the definitions and we need to do a bit of work 
just a little bit and here come makes uh, the famous Cauchy Schwartz inequality makes an appearance it's uh, re remarkably easy to prove inequality but it has far-reaching consequences all over mathematics okay so what does the Cauchy Schwartz inequality say and we need to use it to prove n3 for this definition of norm. Right? So, what does it say? If V is an inner product space, this is the short form I will use from now on, then for all x, y belonging to V, is less than equal to let me write it like this which because of our definition is just saying norm x norm y okay so we are saying that the inner product of x with respect to y is dominated by the norm of x times norm of y and a quick glimpse into the proof for this a sketch of proof this goes like this what would you do so okay by the very basic property of uh, the inner product norm has this norm has to be greater than or equal to zero of course so any x so for uh, if y was zero if y is 0 in this, this is trivial, obviously. So, so let us assume y is not 0 and look at this norm of x minus alpha y. Alpha is some scalar. The norm is going to be positive, non-negative, and we can open this out, and this is a good exercise, just opening, man, manipulating the inner products, and you can see, you'll get minus alpha bar yx. Now, this should be alpha. And I can write this as xx minus alpha yx. And I'm going to take out alpha common and write this bracket. Uh, let me do this it doesn't really matter okay and then you choose so this is true for any alpha so i can choose alpha to be something appropriate so if i choose i want to choose alpha in a way so that the square bracket here becomes zero so that means i can write i should choose alpha bar to be y x over y y please notice that I am assured that this denominator here is not going to be 0 because y is not 0. Okay, and that is the property of the inner product. So once I make this choice of alpha bar, 
what does our in a, a norm reduce to so I get norm x minus alpha by square and that's equal to x x minus y x over y y x y okay so this implies and we have what we wanted y x x y is less than equal to and using the property of symmetry this means mod x square is less than equal to and we can write this as simply this is a technique which is used often to prove many things you start with an arbitrary alpha and then you can choose an alpha to your convenience okay so that's why I did it in a bit of detail so we have the Cauchy Schwarz inequality and the purpose was to show that this norm that we have defined here uh, sorry here is actually a norm in the sense it satisfies n1 n2 n3 and we really want to prove n3 so let's look at this now so with this in hand the Cauchy Schwarz inequality established look at n3 so I have for x y in v I have norm x plus y so I'll write a square because it's easier for me and it's coming from this inner product and that we know is equal to if I re uh, just open this again I'm sorry this is creating some trouble just give me a minute so if I open this out I have norm x square plus inner product x y plus inner product y x plus norm y square and that gives me and you know the real part of a complex number is less than or equal to its modulus so plus and now I can use my Cauchy Schwarz inequality so it says this is less than 2 norm x norm y and that's norm x plus norm y square so we have established our third condition for this thing to be an actually be a norm So thus, if V is an inner product space with inner product, then V is a norm space. with norm given by okay so the inner product is making it into a norm space which means 
you are going to get a matrix here so we can talk about convergence things as well okay so the moment you have convergence notions so the convergence notions will come norm of x square let me make it just a bit explicit a sequence x n in v so from now on v is an inner product space is said to converge to an x belonging to v if norm xn okay so this norm is the norm which is coming now i will write it as norm v which is coming from the inner product and this is of course true even if you had any norm space this is what, how we define convergence in a norm space which is basically the convergence given by the matrix topology okay and we also define a Cauchy sequence in much the same way as you would expect it so it's a sequence xn such that norm of xn minus xm goes to zero as n m go to infinity which means that of course this can be made as small as possible and we can write an epsilon formulation for these two but i will refrain from doing that right now okay and if we recall v is or any norm space let me write a norm space is said to be complete if every Cauchy sequence in it converges in the space so there is an x naught such that if xn is Cauchy then there is an x naught in V such that xn converges to this xn and the such spaces are called a Banach spaces and thus brings us finally to the definition of a Hilbert space A complete inner product space is called a Hilbert space. Okay, so you have this V, we start with the vector space V, we make it into if possible you can make it into an inner product space that gives you defines a norm on v which makes v a norm space and if this norm space is complete which means every Cauchy sequence and v converges then we call this norm space a Hilbert space so the norm on this Hilbert space is coming from an inner product like this so first let's look at some examples of Hilbert spaces the simplest one the simplest one is R n over the field R so of course it includes R3 and that is our model for this Hilbert spaces so what would be obviously the tip tuples these and the inner product we'll define as imitate the dot product so that is
okay so we have the norm the euclidean norm then and because rn is finite dimensional this norm space is complete okay so then rn with this norm or rather this inner product is a hilbert space let me make this mod so that i can just prevent some more writing okay so this is a first example of a hilbert space but we could also do this less abstractly then the second one cn over the field c everything exactly similar except your we will want a bar here so that the properties of the inner product are satisfied and then the norm works in the same way this is also finite dimensional so automatically complete so now first uh, the most cited example of a hilbert space infinite dimensional is l2 which can be thought of as an infinite dimensional version of the cn so cn is of course an l2 the space sequence space so consists of all sequences taking coming from c and we just square sum up so this is a sequence space uh, an example of a sequence space we want to it's a vector space and there is a little bit of work to show that is closed with respect to addition involving some inequalities some well-known and oft used inequalities i will not go into that so l2 is a vector space over c and I mean it is actually a version of cauchy schwartz that you will use to prove that it's a vector space so what's the inner product okay The fact that this infinite series converges is all is again because of the cauchy schwarz inequality and the fact that x i's and y i's are here okay then l2 is an inner product space and is complete i won't have time to show you this but it's any st standard book and function analysis will have a proof probably and uh, would probably be exhibiting that l2 is complete so we have our first infinite dimensional example of a hilbert space and the fourth one that i want to give is space of functions so let me take this up so these are measurable functions and such that
So that the integral is integrable and this thing is part of the hypothesis. So this is all functions which are square integrable. And for this space we define the inner product in this form. There are several L2 spaces, depends on what measure space you are taking, you can define them and they are all examples of Hilbert spaces, most of them will be separable but you can take some more, uh, a different kind of measure spaces where L2 then will not be separable. I will talk about separability in a bit. So. is a Hilbert space as well and one more example so we said I told you every and this is a well-known thing every finite dimensional space is complete you define that in a product or a norm on it whatever norm you define on it if your underlying vector space is finite dimensional then the norm space is going to be complete. So does it mean that there are no infinite dimensional inner product spaces which are not complete, which are com not complete? That's not true. So you can find of an inner product space which is infinite dimensional but not complete and hence not and not a Hilbert space. So you can just call it HI if I define it's a sequence as a sequence space but that only finitely many entries are known zero so i can define the inner product here in the same way as i've been doing for l2 rn cn basically the same idea so what is that same thing and this is an inner product space you can check Okay, but it is not complete. And why is that? Why does it fail to be complete? So to do that, I need to exhibit a Cauchy sequence which does not converge in HI. And I, without going into the details, let me say that if I write my sequence a n to be um, one half, so on, one by n, and then zero after that. So this is for n going from one to so on then a n of course belongs to h i because h i consists of all sequences with only finitely many entries non-zero so a n's are here and you can see that norm a n will indeed go to zero 
as n and m go to infinity but a n will also go to zero where okay i am writing this so where technically this is not entirely correct because i'll say a is not in hi but you can see that a can, a n will get arbitrarily close to this a which will be one which does not belong to h i because of this condition of only finitely many entries are non zero okay so this is not a complete inner product space so it's not a hilbert space but what one could do is so here is one example of a cauchy sequence which is trying to converge to a in, in fact it goes very near a but a happens to fall outside it's not in hi so what one can do is complete a space like this completing loosely means that you add all the limit points so you take all cauchy sequences in the space and you see where they would like to converge like to converge and you add all those possible points into so hi together with all the limit points becomes a complete hilbert space so only thing that is preventing it from being complete is that a and other examples like this are falling outside the space so you add all the limit points and that's called completion i am not going to go into a technical details about that but so a uh, an incomplete inner product can be made can be completed to obtain a hilbert space So here in this example, why it was not an inner product uh, Hilbert space is because it is not complete. But, and we've seen that an inner product space is a norm space and the norm comes from an inner product. But what about the converse question? So if we have a norm space, say x with a norm how do we know determine whether the norm comes from an inner product that is can we find a map like this such that norm x square is x x for all x belonging to x can we do that okay so the answer is provided to us by the parallelogram law so what does it say if v is an inner product space i don't need the 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 hilbert space or the completeness bit here it's an inner product space then norm f plus g squared
okay so i don't think i will write out a proof for it it is just sort of manipulation you write out the left hand side uh, as an inner product open and out cancel out things using the properties of inner product and you get this so this should be compared with the fact that in euclidean two dimensional geometry if you have a parallelogram then you know this a b square plus a d square is equal to the sum of the diagonals and that's what this is saying in a more abstract setting if you want this to represent f and this to represent g this would be f plus g and bd along bd will be my g. okay and this is exactly what the parallelogram is so it's able to take this notion to a more abstract setting so here we are we have that if you have an inner product space then the parallelogram law must be satisfied so this gives us a way to answer a question here so if your norm does not satisfy the parallelogram law that means it is not coming from an inner product okay and as an illustration for this we can look at uh, let's look at lp for p not equal to 2 what happens there okay let me just write it quickly here if i take lp let's take l1 what is this l1 space it is again a sequence space and now we demand that summation mod x n square no square okay so if i have p oh what am i writing this has to be less than infinity and this is defines there is a norm here exactly given by this so the question is whether this norm is going to come from an inner product well then we check whether this parallelogram can law can be satisfied so you can check you can take uh, our vectors e1 so so if you take e1 to be and e2 to be what happens you can try these and you will see that if i write f as e1 and g as e2 here you will not get the same answer okay you will not you will see that this law is violated okay so we conclude with just this idea that we have vector spaces then we have vector spaces with inner products we have norm spaces so every inner product space is a norm space but every norm space is not an inner product space and a complete inner product space is called a hilbert space and we have seen some examples of hilbert spaces okay i will stop here for this lecture and we continue with other properties of Hilbert spaces in the next one.